and welcome back to the Siri Poetry Library. We're finishing up our Exo Squad series today. This is part five, Sergeant Torres. This one and the one after it were the hardest to write because these were the two characters that were pretty difficult to find the right story to tell. So more on that when we close. Rita was a fragile teenager when Glenn left her crying on that park bench. She joined Exofleet to pay for school, find a better life for herself, for both of them. He was impatient and made her choose. It was him or her future. On that day, Rita died and Sergeant Torres was born. Outmatched classmates in training and mock battles, she could have commanded Starship, but Sergeant Torres was not one to sit sipping tea, watching view screens, not while pirate scum raided the star routes. Her first squad had a pirate clan on the run when they fell into an ambush. Pirates slaughtered her friends, but decided rather than kill Torres, they would chip the casing on her frame, let her drown slowly. She should have been dead when Abel's squad found her, but she was Sergeant Torres. Nothing could break her. Strange allies come in war. Torres soon found herself fighting alongside the same pirate she once chased through deep space. War makes us all slaves to necessity. Trust can wait while the only choice is victory or death. When the war ended, she returned home to liberate humans from work camps across Earth. On an overcast day in Buenos Aires, Torres spotted a familiar-looking face among the freed prisoners. Someone from a past life. Glenn didn't recognize her. Had she changed that much? She stepped out of her exo-frame and called to him. He stared, confused, trying to remember. Torres embraced him. He could barely speak, only whisper a name. Rita. She wept joyfully as she held him close, as if the years of conflict and heartbreak had not happened. Sergeant Torres, the toughest soldier in the fleet, but not this day. She isn't a soldier, a warrior, a liberator. Today, she is a young woman untouched by pain and war. Today, she is Rita. Okay, let's move on to part six, I believe. Dogs of War. This is a poem about Wolf Bronski. Um, character I went on a bit of a journey with. I didn't like him till uh, maybe like somewhere in season two. <laughs> But he's a great character, and uh, I went back and revisited the first 13 episodes of the first season, and I liked him a lot more And when I saw the series and how it played out. Wolfgang Amadeus Bronski found a friend on the last patrol. With so many starved on Venus, it's a miracle it survived. General Draconis, vilest commander of the Neo-Sapien Empire, dealt that planet the cruelest of hands. Wolf had fought aliens, pirates, but never knew the horrors of war till he saw the desperate eyes of children freed from Neo work camps. He heard rustling in the jungle. Could be Neos on the run. Wolf readied his blaster, but who wandered out? A scrawny brown dog. Mutt was scared, shaking like a leaf. Wolf gave him a protein bar and water. Maybe it was Starshock. Maybe he'd been walking too long in the heat. But when he saw that little mangy face, he couldn't hold the tears back. Jump troops noticed, but none said a word. They don't talk to Exo Squad, so Bronski's reputation was safe. Wolf didn't have friends in the jumpers or in the fleet. Only the kid, Kaz, who'd follow him around like a lost pup. Now this dog, little Wolfie, trails along at his side. Survivors, dogs of war, marching onward to victory drove a train to the Bering Strait on a trip to Earth, saved priceless art from a world torn by chaos. Kaz was taken back by the beauty of the Northern Lights, but all Wolf could see that night was Eve Hanley. Phaeton's empire fell with no glory or honor. Wolf and Eve ran the Chicago streets to St. James Cathedral, ringing the chimes of peace for all peoples. He was once without hope, or home, but as Wolf kissed Eve, a bright future appeared for both of them. They were lost, lost as that dog wandering the forests of Venus, spent most of their lives running away, not realizing they were running toward each other all along. 
Okay, so we're going to finish it up with number seven. And that will be it for the ExoSquad poem series. It's two years late. I apologize because I told a lot of the Exo fan sites years ago that it would be ready in 2018. That's when I first wrote it. But I never posted it. We'll get into that on the last video. Signing off.